to the channel. I hope you are all well. Now, many of you have contacted me with regard to my long leader streamer setup. So today I'm going to go through the hows and the whys of that setup. And at the very beginning, I have to say that this setup is designed for the size of river that I normally fish here in Spain. Although I have no doubt uh, that there are occasions when this is suitable on larger and uh, much stronger rivers. And I'll go through that a little later. But let's start at the operational end. Uh, the reel that I use is, uh, it's an old reel, it's a cassette reel, and it is in actual fact a Gray's GX500. Uh, it's quite a large reel. And some of you may be asking why such a large reel. It's a question of balance. I use a 10 foot three weight uh, for streamer fishing. And this reel, although a little larger and heavier, creates a better balance uh, for my fishing. I have spoken on many occasions about the balance between rod and reel. Uh, so that's why I have a larger reel. On this reel, I have a parallel nymphing line. Now the parallel nymphing line is there for a reason. When uh, you are fishing into a current, a thicker line will often take the flies off course to where you want to fish them. And the same thing can be applied to a shorter leader because the line obviously attached to the leader takes the flies off course. So that's why I have a nymphing line on here. Now this is uh, not an expensive nymphing line, probably about uh, 40 euros or less than 40 euros, $40, 40 pounds. And uh, it is 27 meters long, uh, which is on the way to 30 yards. And the minimum is uh, 22 meters, which is about 24 yards in terms of competition fishing. So that's why I have this uh, parallel nymphing line. Uh, it's about 0.58 uh, millimeters and the minimum is 0.55. Now on the end of uh, the line, because it is inexpensive, it has no loop connection. So I have whipped on my own loop connection and added a one millimeter tippet ring. Now, um, if you have uh, a, a little more expensive uh, parallel nymphing line, then it may have a loop on the end, or you may want to add uh, a braided loop, however you want to fish it. But that's the reason why I have a parallel nymphing line. Now, attached to that uh, tippet ring, I would use about 14 feet, about four meters of 0 0.18 fluorocarbon. Now, this happens to be Sirgua, and that's what I use for the initial part of the long leader. So that will be tied to the uh, tippet ring, and the knot that I would use would be a tucked half blood knot. Um, it may have other names, so this is what it looks like. It's four turns. Back through the loop. And again through the loop that you have just created. It's pulled tight. Now of course you will wet this knot before you slide it down. And that is the knot that I would use to attach the leader to the tippet ring. Okay, it's a fairly simple knot and lots of you will use it. At the end of the uh, 18 or the 018 line, the 4x line, I would then add approximately six feet, uh, a meter, nearly two meters of 0 0.16 fluorocarbon. 
And this again is Seagua, and that is about 4.5x. Now at the end of the 18 millimeter, I will tie another tippet ring and I would add the 0.16 to that tippet ring using exactly the same knots. This side, the 18 millimeter, the 4X, and this side, the 0.16 millimeter, which is 4.5X. Now that particular line would need to have a dropper on it. Now there are various methods of uh, adding a dropper, but I'll show you the knot that I use. Now uh, this is the uh, six feet of 0.16 millimeter, the 4.5. I would cut it in half approximately. which would mean that I have this going back to the tippet ring and this half would be for tying on the flies. Now I would take the dropper part or the mother part and add the longer piece underneath which will go to the point fly. The knot that I would use is a figure of eight knot, and this is how it's tied. It's exactly the same method to begin with as the surgeon's knot or the water knot. It's just one turn of both lines. And you pull that through. You then invert those two lines and pass it through from behind both pieces and I have cut that a little bit short but it doesn't matter as you pull that through you will see that you have a figure of eight knot wet it before you pull it tight and this is what you will end up with. The top part going towards the tippet ring and the bottom part for the dropper. And it's the bottom part which runs parallel to the line to the point fly that you tie onto. So having wet this and pulled it tight, you trim up the excess And there is your dropper and your point fly further down. Now that is about three feet, about a meter between the dropper and the point fly. For tying on the flies, I would use exactly the same knot that I use for tying the line onto the tippet ring, which is the tucked half blood knot. So there you go. Uh, that is the system that I use. I hope you found the information interesting and you could certainly uh, try it out. Now, as far as the larger rivers are concerned, uh, generally speaking, if you have to cast longer distances, this may be difficult to cast, this system, and uh, you would probably need to change your line. However, for three or four rod lengths, possibly five, you could use this system. Now, on the larger rivers, there will be somewhere where the river has a very strong current, but it swings round to the bank, creating a slack. Now, fish often lay in that slack and wait for food to come round to them. That is a perfect opportunity to use this system on a larger river. Thanks very much for viewing and uh, do hit the bell to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.